Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to EDUSAT live lectures. Dear friends, today in computer science we will be talking about computer memory management. To discuss this topic we have with us our subject expert Dr. U.S. Pandey. Dr. Pandey is associate Prof professor in department of computer sciences in school of open learning University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you. Now we will talk about the computer memory management. Now we divide these things in different areas like you can just say here the different outlines. One is memory hierarchy, cache and cache performance. So we will talk about in this detail what is this memory hierarchy is. The memory unit is an essential component in any digital computer since it is needed for storing programs and data. Not all accumulated information is needed by the CPU at the same time. How the memory hierarchy is being organized. Therefore, it is more economical to use low cost storage devices to serve as a backup for storing the information that is not currently used by CPU that is central processing unit. Here you can see that the memory hierarchy since 1980 CPU has outpaced DRM that we call dynamic RAM. You can see here the performance gap grew 50 percent a year by this. Here you can see up to 2010 and this in this performance. Now memory hierarchy. How to architects address this gap? A. Put a smaller faster cache memories between CPU and DRM create a memory hierarchy. Now you can see this memory hierarchy. The memory unit that directly communicate with CPU is called the main memory. Devices that provide backup storage are called auxiliary memory. The memory hierarchy system consists of all storage devices employed in a computer system from the slow by high capacity auxiliary memory to an relatively faster main memory to an even smaller and faster cache memory. This is how the hierarchy of the memory system is going to be there. Now the main memory occupies a central position by being able to communicate directly with the CPU and with auxiliary memory devices through an input output processor. This is how the memory hierarchy functions. Now you can see here a special very high speed 
memory called cache is used to increase the speed of a processing by making current programs and data available to the CPU at a rapid rate. You can see here the auxiliary memory, the input output processor, the main memory cache and it is connected with the CPU that is central processing unit. Here again the CPU logic is usually faster than the main memory access time with the result the processing speed is limited primarily by the speed of main memory. The cache is used for storing segments of programs currently being executed in the CPU and temporary data frequently needed in the present calculations. Here you see that how the memory hierarchy is being organized, whether it is an auxiliary memory, it is a main memory or it is a cache memory. The typical access time ratio between cache and the main memory is about 1 to 7 up to 10. Auxiliary memory access time is usually 1000 times that of main memory. Most of the main memory is of the general purpose computer is made up of RAM, what we call random access memory, integrated circuits, chips, but a portion of memory may be constructed with ROM chips that is read only memory chips. Usually the computers consist RAM and ROM chips. The ROM portion that is read only memory portion of a main memory is needed for storing an initial program called bootstrap loader which is to start the computer software operating when power is turned off. So, you can see the information which is loaded into the main memory that is in ROM when you switch off your computer later on when you restart your computer the information is going to be loaded especially the operating system and all to start the computer system. Now random access memory that is RAM. Here we talk about the static RAM. Each cell stores bit with the six transistor circuits, retains value indefinitely as long as it is kept power. Relatively insensitive to disturbance such as electric noise, faster 8 to 16 times faster and more expensive 
8 to 16 times more expensive as well than DRM that is dynamic RAM. So, this is about the static RAM and now we talk about the DRM that is dynamic random access memory. Here in this case, each cell stores bit with the capacitor and transistor. Value must be refreshed every 10 to 100 ms, sensitive to disturbances, slower and cheaper than static RAM. You can see a comparison between static RAM versus dynamic RAM. Here static RAM and dynamic RAM you can see the transactions per bit, access time, persist, sensitive, cost, applications. Virtually all desktops are server computers. Since 75 used DRAMs for main memory and SRAM for CASE. So, here you can see a comparison, a summary between static RAM and dynamic RAM. Now, we will talk about more about ROM that is random access memory. ROM is used for storing programs that are permanently resident into the computer and for taps of constant that do not change in value once the production of the computer is completed. The random, the read only memory portion of the main memory is needed for storing an initial program called bootstrap loader which is to start the computer software operating when power is turned off the main memory. A RAM that is random access memory chip is better suited for communication with the CPU if it has one or more control inputs that select the chip when needed. The block diagram of a RAM chip, it is shown in the next slide. The capacity of memory is 128 words of 8 bits, that is 1 byte per word. Here, you can see here in the RAM chip select 1, chip select 2, read, RD, write, 7 bits addresses. 8 bit bus system. You can see here the CS1, CS2, RD, YD and the memory function is state of data bus. All the table when you give 0 and 0 you see the memory function is inhibit high impedance up to in this you can see the read and write also. So, this is how the RAM is going to be there. Now, about ROM, the chip select 1, CS1 and chip select 2, 9 bit address it is going to be there. Here you see 8 bit bus system, 512 to 8 ROMs. 
Now, memory address map. The memory address map is a pictorial representation of assigned address space for each chip in the system. To demonstrate an example, assume that a computer system needs 512 bytes of RAM and 512 bytes of ROM. The RAM have 128 byte and need 7 address line where the ROM have 512 bytes and need 9 address line. You can see here that the memory address map RAM 1, RAM 2, RAM 3, RAM 4 and ROM that is a read only memory. Here hexadecimal addresses have been given 0007F, 0080000FF and 0100017F and 01801FF. In the case of ROM, it is 0200030F. Here you can see the mapping also up to 10 to 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 and up to 1. So, here you can see the memory address maps. The hexadecimal addresses assigns a range of hexadecimal equivalent address for each chip. Lines 8 and 9 represent four distinct binary combination to specify which RAM we choose. So, here you can decide by this that which RAM we have to choose. The RAM have 128 bytes and need 7 address line where the room have 512 bytes and needed 9 address lines. Here you can see the complete things how the CPU and the different decoders, the memory correction of the CPU, RAM and all story manage. Now, we again talked about the cache memory. If the if active portion of a program and data are placed in a fast small memory, the average memory access time can be reduced. Thus, reducing the total execution time of the program. Such a fast small memory is referred to a cache memory. The cache is the fast component in the memory hierarchy and approaches the speed of CPU component. The cache memory when CPU needs to access memory the cache is examined. If the word is found in the cache, it is read from the fast memory. If the word addressed by the CPU is not found in the cache, the main memory is access to read the word. When the CPU refers to memory and the find the word in cache, it is said to be hit, otherwise it is missed. So, to now we talked about the memory hierarchy, about the room, about the RAM, about the little bit about the cache memory also. Thank you.
welcome viewers in this session we'll talk about the again about the memory management in the cache memory when the cpu refers to memory and find the words in cache it is said to be produced a hit otherwise it is a miss the cache memory the performance of the cache memory is frequently measured in terms of a quality called hit ratio the hit ratio is equal to hit divided by hit plus miss so in this way you can get the cache's hit ratio now the basic characteristics of a cache memory is it is facts as access time therefore very little or no time must be wasted when searching the words in the cache the transformation of data from main memory to cache memory is referred to as a mapping processes there are three types of mapping associated mapping direct mapping and set associated mapping so now we talked about the associated mapping in the cache memory again to help understand the mapping procedure we have the following example here you can see the main memory 32k to 12 bits that is 2 to the power 15 cpu and cache memory 512 to 12 bits that is 2 to the power 9 associative mapping the fastest and most flexible cache organization use as associate memory the associative memory stores both the addresses and data of the memory word Now, I mean, in, in associated mapping, as we told you, that they store both the address and data of the memory word. If not, the main memory is accessed for the word. If the cache is full, and addresses data pair. must be displaced to make room for a pair that is needed and not presently in the cache here you can see the associated mapping cpu addresses 15 bits argument register address you can see the data 0100 the data 34500027 and here you can see the different data things are there associated mapping a cpu addresses a 15 bits is placed in the argument register and the associative memory as searched for matching addresses if the address is found the corresponding 12 bits data is read and sent to the cpu how this associate mapping is going to take place 
Now we talked about the direct mapping. Associative memory is expensive compared to RAM. In general case, there are 2 to the power k words in cache memory and 2 to the power n words in main memory. In our case, k is 9 and n is equal to 15. The n bit memory address is divided into two fields. k bits for the index and n minus k bits for the tag field. Here you can see the direct mapping tag index everything is presented in octal 32k into 12 main memory and you see 512 into 12 cache memory. Another direct mapping example you can see the different memory addresses, memory data, index addresses, tag, data. So, in memory addresses here you can see 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 7, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 and in the different memory data you will find out in the case of direct mapping. The disadvantages of the direct mapping is that two words with the same index in their addresses but with the different tag values cannot reside in the cache memory at the same time. Now, this is a disadvantage which you must know that in the case of direct mapping, the two words with the same index in their addresses, but their different tax values cannot reside. Now, another is set associative mapping is an improvement over the direct mapping. In that, each word of a cache can store two or more word of memory under the same index addresses. You will be knowing till now the associative mapping, direct mapping and now this is an improvement over the direct mapping and that is set associated mapping. You can see here in the set associated mapping the memory addresses, the memory data, index addresses, tag data, tag data. Now, in the slide each index addresses refers to two data words and their associated tags. Each tag requires 6 bits and each data word has 12 bits. So, the word length is 2 into 6 plus 12, the meaning is 18 into 2, the meaning by is 36 bits. 
now we talked have to talk about the cassis performance the cassis performance what we have talked about about the cassis memory the set associative mapping the direct mapping and associative mapping now we'll talked about the cassis performance although a single cassis could try to supply instructions and data it can be bottleneck for example when a load or store instruction is executed the pipe lined processor will simultaneously request both data and instruction hence a single cache would present a structural hazard for loads and stores leading to stall one simple way to conquer the problem is to divide it one cache is dedicated to instructions and another is to data separate caches are found in most recent processes as we have discussed it will be better if you have two caches separately for instructions as well as for data and the separate caches found in most recent processor so that the speed of computer restoring memory and organizational activity is be better now average access time the average access time equal to the percentage instructions into head time plus instructions miss rate into miss penalty plus the percentage data into head time plus data miss rate into miss penalty so this is how you can calculate the average memory access time that is in a instructions into hit rate hit time plus the instructions miss rate into miss penalty is going to be added the percentage of data into the hit time again plus data miss rate into the miss penalty so you can calculate that the average access time the average memory access time assume 40% of the instructions are data accessing instruction let a hit take one clock cycle and the miss penalty is 100 clock cycle assume instructions miss rate is 4% and the data access miss rate is 12% what is the average memory access time as we have just discussed you can calculate in the same way 60% into 1 plus 4% multiplied by 100 in the case of instructions and in the case of data it is 40% into 1 plus 12% into 100 and that is 0.6 into 5 plus 0.4 into 13 which is coming equivalent to 8. 2 clock cycle 
so here you can calculate the AORIS memory access time. Now the virtual memory, the addresses used by a programmer will be called a logical addresses. And addresses in main memory is called a physical addresses. Here you can see the virtual addresses, the physical addresses that is in main memory, data 1, data 2, data 3 and data 4. You can check it here with the physical memory and the physical addresses. Only part of the programs need to be in memory for execution. In the case of virtual memory, the logical addresses space can therefore be much larger than physical address space allows for more efficient process creation. So, virtual memory have a very impact and great role when you are calculating a very high things. The term PACE refers to group of addresses space of the same size. For example, if auxiliary memory contains 1024k and main memory contains 32k and the page size equals to 1k, then auxiliary memory has 1024 pages and main memory has 32 pages. Now here you can see that virtual memory, see here the page 0, 1, 2 and up to the different pages virtual memory, the memory map physical memory and that is how the concept of virtual memory is going to be there. Now demand paging, in instead of loading whole programs into memory, the demand paging is an alternative strategy to initially load pages only as they are needed. Lazy swapper, pages are only loaded when they are demanded during program execution. Now, the demand paging basic concepts are when a processor is to be swapped in, the pager guesses which pages will be used. Before the process is it swapped out again, instead of swapping in whole processes, the pager brings only those necessary pages into memory and now valid invalid bit. With each page table entry a valid invalid bits is associated. Initially valid invalid bit it is set to an I and all entries, 
during address translation if valid invalid bits in pace table entry is i equal to greater than pace fault. Here you can see that the frames valid invalid bits the pace table. Another the valid invalid bit example here you can see that logical memory frame valid invalid bit pace table physical memory and all. So, this is an example of valid invalid bit and now the pace fault if there is a reference to the page, the first reference to that page will trap to the operating system. Here you can see when the operating system to looks at another table to decide invalid reference about just not in memory, get empty frame, swap page into frame, reset tables, set validation width and restart the instructions that caused the page fault. So, viewers, we talked about the cache memory, the cache's performance and all related activities including the virtual memory, the page segmentation demanding of the page into the memory organization. Hope you will understand about this memory concept, how these kind of constructions and how you can check, you can check control about the memory access time or in other words you can calculate the memory access time. Thank you. On that note, I would like to thank sir for this very enriching discussion and I would like to thank you dear friends for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you. Thank you.